Hey everyone, what's up? It's Rob Dotson. Polymer 1.0 is in the house, and today I'm going to introduce you to the brand new Polymer Starter Kit. So come on down and let's get hacking. So Polymer Starter Kit is a brand new opinionated scaffold for building Polymer apps, and it is jam-packed full of awesome. Out of the box, it provides a really nice layout that leverages the latest 1.0 material design elements. It also has support for theming using custom properties, and we showed these off in the last episode. Now you're seeing it kind of at a bigger scale, which is really cool. The other really awesome thing about the starter kit is that it comes with optional support for offline first development, which means in your application, you can go, you could set it into airplane mode, refresh the browser, and everything would still load. You could even navigate to different pages within your application, things would still work. Now, what's doing this magic behind the scenes is a new technology called Service Worker, and I'm gonna talk more about that in a future episode because it's just so cool. Okay, so how do you get started? Well, there's two approaches. You could head over to the Polymer Starter Kit homepage and download the zip bundle. That is one way to do it. Uh, or if you want to be a hot shot like me, you can install the Polymer Yeoman Generator. The generator pulls down the latest version of the starter kit. So anytime you want to just like spin up a new project, you just go to your command line, you type Yo Polymer, and boom, you're ready to rock. Now once you're set up, bust up in your editor and this is what you should see. The files in the root of the project are dedicated to things like package management, right? I've got a package JSON here. Uh, linters with uh, JSNRC and JSCSRC. Uh, so all of this is kind of like build type stuff. Up here in the app directory, this is actually where all of the UI for my application is going to live. And because I downloaded the version that has support for the gulp build process, I've also got a gulp file here. But you know, if you went with the, the light version, which doesn't include gulp, that's totally fine. You don't necessarily need this for this tutorial, but you know, I just want you to know that that's there. So all of these files might seem really overwhelming, but don't panic. There's tons of great stuff in here, and I'm gonna help walk you through all of it over the next few episodes of Polycast. For today, let's just start really small. We're gonna preview the app, and then we're gonna update some of the theme colors. Now, because the starter kit uses gulp for its build process, I'm gonna hop into my terminal and type out gulp serve, which will boot up a local server, and it's even going to open my browser for me, which is pretty awesome. Nice. Now, if you're using the light version of the site, which doesn't include gulp, you can use your own server. So here I'm just booting up Python simple HTTP server on port 3000. Uh, and then I would need to go and open my browser myself, but this is an option for the folks who downloaded that version. Next, I'm going to open up my elements HTML file, and I'm going to drop in a paper fab, which is short for floating action button. So I can scroll down. There's a lot of elements that are imported already, but just right underneath the paper toolbar here, I'll drop in my own import for paper fab. So I can have a little bit of UI showing up on the screen. Next, I'm going to hop over to my index.html file. And in the section that says data route home, I'm going to take this paragraph here and just delete it and re replace it with my floating action button. So get rid of this p tag and drop in that paper fab and give it an icon of add. Now, when I save this and go back to my browser, that floating action button is just going to be there on screen, even though I haven't hit refresh or anything like that. Now, the way that this is working is the gulp version of the starter kit comes with a tool called Browser Sync. And Browser Sync synchronizes updates to all of your devices whenever you save files in your editor. So if I had a phone or a tablet plugged into my laptop right now, I was trying to debug on all of them at once, they would all refresh all of the same instant, which is really cool. Uh, next, I'm going to open up the app theme HTML file. And if you watched the previous episode, this should look kind of familiar to you. Inside of this file, we've got custom properties for theming our entire application. So you see I've got this root pseudo class up here and then a few different custom properties over there on the right. Now, I can use these. These are basically the hooks that all of the material design elements in the application have exposed to me so that I can style and theme them. This root pseudo class right here, if you've never seen one of those before, uh, that just targets the highest parent in the page. And it's a good place to provide some values for our custom properties. Now, a way to do that is to go over to a site called Material Palette. 
And you can actually just select colors that you want to use. These are all coming from the Material Design color palette. Uh, you can just click on a few swatches. And so I'm going to pick pink and light blue. This is going to build a palette for me. And you can actually see a preview up there in the top right. And then down below it, there are some hex values. So I can copy and paste those hex values into my theme file. And once I save this, I switch back over to my browser. And you can see that now my header is updated. The floating action button is updated. And even these little um, you know, lighter colors over here in my icons have been updated. So really cool. Just with like a tiny bit of work, we've already started theming this app application and dropping new elements into it. So you've taken your first step into the world of Polymer 1.0, and I hope you're all really excited. I'm going to keep digging into the starter kit, showing off some of the cool features here on Polycast. So be sure to click that little subscribe button. Ask questions down in the comments if you have them. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, what's up? Rob, uh, Q&A time. Todd Judd writes in and says, in Polymer 05, you had layout attributes that came bundled with Polymer. Those don't seem to be around in Polymer 1.0. So what happened to those? Uh, good question, Todd. Around version Polymer 0809, we switched from using attributes to classes. And then in 1.0, we actually took all those classes and we bundled them up into their own element set called Iron Flex Layout. So you can actually follow this link right here and go to the repo for Iron Flex Layout. And inside that repo, we have custom properties that you can apply to your own elements. We also have CSS files in there that you can just import into your elements and use those to get your uh, Flexbox layout attributes back, or layout classes, I should say. So again, Todd, great question. Thanks for writing in. We will send you some swag. If you have questions about Polymer, leave them down in the comments. If it's a juicy question, we will try and feature you. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.